Hey everybody, welcome back to Guitar for Dummies Peer Tutoring. I'm your peer tutor, Dan Wynn. Uh, yeah, it's been a while. I tried shooting an episode last week and learned the hard way about what happens when you shoot in really high resolution. Just got me a new, brand new iPhone 11 Pro. I shot a half hour episode in full HD, 4K, 60 frames per second. It was epic, except for two problems. One, it made for a 22 gigabyte file, which would take all night just to transfer by wire into my computer. Not to mention about a week to upload to YouTube. And second of all, half the time I had my hand and guitar neck out of the frame, so it was complete waste, completely wasted footage anyway. So this is why it's called peer tutoring, because I'm as much a dummy about this as anybody else. All right, so we're gonna talk about taking that idea of the caged chord and applying it to scales and scale uh, patterns. So you'll recall that I demonstrated, let's say with the key of C, that you can play the C chord in those five shapes, C, A, G, E, and D. So here's your C-shaped C, and your A-shaped C, and your G-shaped C, and your E-shaped C, and then your D-shaped C, right? All right, so again, the point of all that is not that you're likely to um, play those chords that way very often, though you might. I mean, it's not uncommon to see this this shape for uh, a bar chord, especially if you're gonna, I mean, if you're gonna play a B, it's um, the lowest point where you're gonna do that from. Or if you could play, um, you know, power chords, they're often very similar in shape. But anyway, I digress. <clears throat> so today, in this episode, we're just gonna talk about the C shape. What do I mean by that? All right, so based around this, the C shape C chord is where you get your first position for the C scale. Now, I remember from my intro to scales way back in the other episode, and if uh, you haven't seen that, go back and look at that. Seven natural notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then the octave, next octave up, C, right? So it's, you have your base, your root note, then you have a tone, then a tone, and then half a tone, and then a tone, and a tone, and a tone, and then a half tone brings you back to the octave. Okay. Now, so there you go. But you have more than that in this position. So you have from C to C. <laughs> See what I did there? C to shiny C. Yeah, anyway. Um, so one octave in this position, but you also have a few more notes. So you can get from this lower C, you can go down to the B, then the A, then G, then F, and an E. Likewise, from this C up here, you can go up to D, E, F, and G. So, all the notes right in this position, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. That is called your diatonic scale. Diatonic scale is all the notes naturally occurring within that key. Another way you could play through this is another kind of scale called a pentatonic scale. Now you might, that might sound familiar, Pentagon, right? Five-sided building there in Washington, Department of Defense, yeah. Um, well, pentatonic, five notes. The pentatonic scale skips over those half tones. So let me demonstrate what that would look like here. So you have E, skip the F, because that's a half tone, go right to G, and you have A, skip the half tone B, and go right to C, then A, I'm sorry, G, A, no. <laughs> this is why I call myself a peer tutor. D, E, skip the F, G, A, skip the B, back to C, D, E, skip the F, G. So it goes like this. All right, so let me, I'm gonna go over that scale again, just talking about numbers. By numbers meaning which fingers you're gonna use. One, two, three, four, right? All right, this is the easy position because you're just using three, because you've got the nut here and open uh, strings for some of these notes. So you're gonna play open, three, open, three, open, two, open, two, one, 
three, open three. Okay? Now, that's the only place you're going to be only using three fingers because I'm going to demonstrate that same scale shape up here at the 12th fret. Because remember, 12th fret, you're starting all over again. This note, it's the same note, different octave, right? Make sure I stay in the frame this time. I'll stand up for this. All right. So now you're going to be doing the same notes, higher octave, but we're going to use all four of your fingers. So now we're going to start one, four, one, four, one, three, one, three, two, four, one, four. Now I'm going to do that again in both places, going through the diatonic scale. So now you've got open one, three, open two, three, open two, three, open two, open one, three, open one, three. Okay? Okay, now if you do that up here in the octave position, you're going to be open one, four, open two, four, open two, four, open two, open one, I'm sorry, open two, four. Let me do that again. Constantly reinforcing why I'm up here on this dummies thing. Open two, four, open three, four, open three, four, open three, open two, four, open two, four. That's your diatonic scale. And that C shape in the in the key of C, in the open position, as well as the 12th fret. <clears throat> now, you might be wondering, why is it so important to know both of those? Um, why don't I just play the one of them? Well, you could do that if you wanted to. <clears throat> but here's the thing. It's, it's better to know this other one because the whole point of this is you can apply this shape to any key. We're calling it the C shape because it's based around the open C chord. But what if you're playing, say, in the key of A? Well, you could take that same shape and put it over here. Root yourself on the uh, ninth fret where your index finger is now on the, uh, the C sharp, right? Yep, C sharp. And so let's go with the, the diatonic scale, okay? So you have <clears throat> C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D, E. Right? For um, pentatonic, you have C sharp, E, G sharp, B. <clears throat> no, let me think about this. C sharp, E. Yeah, C sharp, E. Here we go. F sharp, A, B, C sharp, D. Did I get that right? Let me back up, here we go. C sharp, E, F sharp, A, B, C sharp, there we go. C sharp, E, G sharp, F sharp, A, B, C sharp, D, D, E, A, B, C sharp, E, okay? So, C sharp, E, F sharp, A, B, C sharp, E, F sharp, A, B, C sharp, E. Okay, the point is, it's the same. I'm, I'm getting all mixed up trying to get, remember what the right notes were. But I'm not mixed up, I'm playing it. Because that's the easy part. Remembering where the notes are. For fingers, one, four, one, four, one, three, one, three, two, four, one, four. That's the same no matter what, what key you're playing in. What if you want to do this in F? Let's come down here. <clears throat> Root at 
the fifth fret, right? So now you're going, okay. So A, C, right? D, F, G, A, C, D. Nope, nope, ignore that last one. D, F, G, A, C. So, yep. Okay, it's the same exact shape every wherever you play it. So if you're in the key of C, you're gonna play it down here or you're gonna play it up here. If you're in the key of D, you can start over here. If you have E, do it here. Key of F, do it here. Key of G, let's do it here. Um, yeah. Right? The whole point is, this is portable. You, you move it according to where the, the key is going to be. That is the C shape scale pattern. When I get to, when I get through all these, I will then post a demonstration of how you would apply these. So if somebody's playing along. And you can play along with it. Yeah, I'm just picking random notes out there because they're not playing over a particular uh, chord progression. But the point is, those are the notes you can play while somebody's playing through a chord progression in the key of C. Stay tuned. So, when we come back next time, we'll talk about the A shape. We've talked about the C, now we're going to talk about the A next time. Stay tuned. See you next time. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you'll be getting notifications whenever I post new stuff.